Hello, my name is Amanda Grimes, and I'm here from the Mesa High Biotech Academy in Mesa, Arizona, and I'm here to share with you how to use a pipette. We want to make sure that you know how to use this very common piece of equipment and how to teach your students how to use it more effectively. It's pretty commonly used in forensic labs and research labs all over the world, and yet with just a few simple techniques, you can help increase your accuracy and make it a better tool to use with your students for biotechnology, especially those that want to go into some sort of research or forensic science career. So I'm here today to talk about pipetting with you. And most of my students, when I talk about a pipette, this is what they think of. This is pretty much all they use in biology, unless you're from a program that has a really great biotech program and those teachers share with your kids. And so we want to toss this one out the window and we want to get them using some really cool pipetters. These are a really great tool. They're used in research labs, forensic labs, chemistry labs, any kind of lab in the world are going to use these air displacement pipettes. And so I'm going to show you how they work a little bit, how to use them, talk about some common errors that students may have and how to fix them. So. This is a pipetter. You always want to make sure that you've got a tip on it when you use it, but so I want to get you acquainted with how it works. There's always going to be this hook back here that's going to hook over your hand, okay? And you're going to depress the plunger with your thumb. On the pipette, there are actually two stops. So you can push once and then twice, okay? And so there's are very creatively named the first stop and the second stop. And so you want to make sure that when you're filling your pipetter, you know which stop you're at. And so you want to make sure that first stop is very well ingrained with your students. And so I like to do a little bit of biotech exercise, thumb aerobics, and practice having them only going to the first stop up and down about five or ten times so they get used to it. So the first thing is always use a tip on your pipetter. And I just teach my students with food coloring. So I label my tubes that to say practice dye. And food coloring is a very inexpensive way to get some color into your lab. I'm going to go ahead and go to my first stop again. This always is going to be at eye level, so you want to train your students right here. This is the pipetting zone. The tip needs to go just under the surface of the liquid. And at eye level, slowly raise from the first stop up. Okay, train your students to always recover their samples before pipetting into a new tube. Okay, proper dispensing is going to be to the second stop. And in order to dispense properly, you actually want to touch the side of the tube. Slowly go to your first stop. You can see there may be a little bit of liquid left in there. Second stop, keep that plunger depressed. Slowly let go back up, take your thumb off, and eject. Now, one of the common problems I see my students do, because I train them to touch when they eject, they often want to try to touch the walls of the tube as they are getting their samples. And so we have to train our students to make sure that when they're getting sample, they're right in the middle, not touching the walls. Again, because of the cohesive and adhesive properties of water, we want to make sure that they're not doing that. They want to make sure to draw their sample right from the middle with the tip just under the surface of the liquid keeping that pipetter as vertical as possible once there's a sample in it. When they dispense, again, everything at eye level, they do want to touch because we want the water to stick to itself. And so we're going to go to the first stop and second stop. Keep your thumb pressed down, then release and dispose of your tip. 